the ball wide, uh, wanted to have crosses. The crosses were over hit, under hit. Guatemala defended, they were compact. We knew they were gonna have legs and they came with, with energy, but a game where you don't score, you always gotta question your game plan and, and what was happening. And I think for me, looking at Guatemala and Canada today, Guatemala at times looked like the better side. So question marks are going into Cuba, who should play, what position they should play. We can all break them down later on this on the show, but yeah, it just feels like a missed opportunity in many ways. It does, and it puts a lot of pressure on Canada again for Cuba. Uh, obviously, you know, Guatemala, Guadalupe, they'll play each other. Uh, if that ends up a draw and Canada picks up a win, they just got to score a lot of goals against Cuba. Listen, I'm not the strongest at this stuff. If I'm going to start playing this game of you need the wins and you need the goals, it still looks pretty good for Canada. But if you're Herdman, I mean, I think this fan's face says it all because she's probably trying to do the math right now, <laughs> thinking, okay, you're taking on Cuba, who's winless so far. But, you know, Milan Borin obviously wanted a little bit of privacy there as he gets into the huddle, whereas before they welcomed the camera in there. I think that alone also tells you this is not the position they want to be in going into that game against Cuba. No, absolutely not. This is not the position they want to be in. Look, everyone thought at this point they'd have six points or four points. To have two and to only score really one goal because it was an own goal against Guadalupe. Um, yeah, there's just question marks. I know, I know this is still a side where you have a lot of veterans and there's some new players coming in. But I don't want to say disconnect, but there, there is a few a few things lacking. And Canada needs to figure it out going to this last game against Cuba because the quarterfinal, you're going to get a good test. And I'm hoping this Canadian side can be ready for it. Do you feel they tested Guatemala the way we've seen Canada be able to test opponents in the past? No, I think they fell, fell short tonight. Um, they weren't as sharp. I know that he had a lot to do with the performance. And I think, look, you look at a player like Ali Ahmed, who was sensational midweek, but it's hard to go and duplicate that performance again, right? You need 15 guys that are ready and able to go and be at their peak. And that just wasn't the case tonight. I don't think they're a poor Canada. I just don't think they played their best. And I think in these tournaments, these must-win games, and in a tournament like the Gold Cup, you have to be 9 out of 10, 10 out of 10, to get the win and, and, and win, win games like this. Well, and I know it's history, but you know, prior to tonight, 14 times they faced Guatemala. They've won 10 times, which is why I think you see all the smiles on Guatemala's face. They already have a win under their belt. They beat Cuba in their opener. They also know they have a really bad record against Canada. So a draw, they're feeling pretty good about it. Guadalupe, they lead the standings based on their win and draw and goals for. And then you have Canada right now and Cuba, uh, who has zero wins. So that's how the Group D standings are right now. And I guess the positive is that, you know, Canada doesn't give up a goal. The negative, of course, is they don't score, don't uh, pick up the full three points. They came close, though. Jacob Schaffelberg, we wanted to see him representing Canada. He gets the call. He gets into this match. We thought at one point he drew a penalty, Jordan. Uh, but he was a firecracker when he came onto the pitch here. You could just see open net, but this is the All-State save of the match. Uh, this was in the 75th minute, and Hagen comes out and just challenges Schaffelberg, makes himself big, gets a piece of the ball, and denies Schaffelberg in Canada going ahead. But I don't know about you. I like the way Jacob was looking. Yeah, I liked it. I think with that, he's going to want it back and just take a cleaner first touch. It's just a bit too heavy, but... Kudos to Hagen for coming out and making himself big and recognizing that moment that, hey, he's about to take a touch and shoot, and it just closes down the angle. Um, and then also the Guatemalan defenders that were on the line. Who knows? They probably would have got a clearance to that. There are about three of them there. But um, he was a bright spark when he came on, and I like that having a player like Schaffelberg can be a bit more vertical. I think that maybe that sub or that move could have happened early in the match because Everything was in front of the Guatemalan defenders, and that's easy game to, to read. Me playing as a center back, I love when anything's in front of me. That's easy to just go and attack. When you got to turn and run and go and chase someone and do those tedious runs, it's annoying, and that frees up other players. So it would have been nice to see that change maybe a bit sooner. We're going to talk about some changes as well on the pitch, substitutions, but also the movement of Richie Larea going back, Canada needing a goal, but he actually moves down the pitch as opposed to up the pitch. I'll get your thoughts on that. We'll get Jimmy's thoughts on it as well. Jimmy Brennan going to be joining us here. No score in this one between Canada and Guatemala. The Canadians now two draws so far in group stage action at the Gold Cup. More coming up here on One Soccer.
exactly what these players are after. This is a big moment. This is ours. Esto es nuestro. An opportunity at the highest stage. Gold Cup takes the stage. Gatorade. With electrolytes to help replenish what's lost in sweat. Carbs to help fuel your working muscles. And fluids to help you hydrate. Scientifically formulated so you never stop competing. I do this for my town. My time. My time. None of you yeah. people can tell me this. Rehydrate. Replenish. Refuel. Gatorade. Would you believe it? The 16 year old out of nothing tries a shot, and that is an absolute world class. Thank you, Canada, for making dreams come true. We're with you all the way. Full-time stats between Guatemala and Canada. Pretty even in possession. Canadians just a slightly ahead on that, but it didn't really matter. Guatemala with 11 shots to Canada's nine. None of them found the back of the net. Let's hear now from Canada's Jonathan Osorio. Jonathan, what do you assess of this draw? You have two draws to start this Gold Cup. Yeah, it was a tough match. Uh... You know, a tough environment, you know, we were basically playing away. The other team had the, uh, the, um, oh, I can't even think, it's so loud. It's so loud, they pushed them to to run on the pitch and they pushed them to, to really have a good spirit. So it was hard, it was a tough match um, under tough conditions, but I thought the team fought really well. You know, of course we feel like we, we need to come out of this with three points but nonetheless we take the draw and now we go into Cuba w with nothing more on the mind but to win and by a lot of goals with a victory you can be first of the group what can you say about this group that is very talented but very very young and you're one of the ex experimented players it's still a very new team and you can see in the first two games there's a lot of things that there's a lot of new experiences this is a this crowd and everything this environment is a new experience for a lot of players so now that we've gone through that, I think that's so good for our group moving forward. And now going into the last game, we're going to come together and we're going to get it done. The victory is necessary because if you pass as a second, maybe you get USA. How, what do you think about that? Uh, we, right now, we're just focused on winning the game and going through in the group. Uh, you know, whoever we get after, we'll, we, we face that when, when that comes. So right now, we're focused on, on Cuba winning that game and winning with a dominant performance. Thank you. Well, and that's what they need because a draw will not get it done. They will have to win against Cuba. Jimmy Brennan joining us now in studio. I'll give you a chance here. I already asked Jordan this question. Thoughts on this game and did anything in particular stand out to you? Yeah, I just thought in the, in the final third, I thought we, we need to be a little bit more clinical. I think our movement had to be a little bit better. I think we had, what, 23 crosses and it, we, we just weren't precise. Our delivery into the box wasn't, wasn't good enough at times. You know, we, we built up the park, but... We need a little bit more in that final third than, than what we showed tonight. Let's take a look at some of the substitutions because uh, in that second half, we did see Liam Frazier come up. Uh, Bambito was moved back into that midfield position with McGraw coming on in. And why did that bother you? I just have a hard time understanding why a certain player is not in camp right now. Um, again, I'm not a coach. I'm not John Herdman. But just looking at the talent right now in Chouanier, I think he was a player that could easily play this role. Liam Frazier, we've all been guilty of it. I, I used to love playing getting a yellow card, and I would get one in the eighth minute. You, it's hard to play on eggshells for the rest of the match. So he comes out, and you take Bombido, who was playing well, for, in my opinion, for the first half, on the right side of the three. But you still needed a, a dog, a big player, someone to just go box to box in the middle. Schwan, is an MLS All-Star. I, I don't know why he, he hasn't been in this, this squad for this Gold Cup 
just because he can play that role. And I think now you have a makeshift. You have Weatherspoon coming in. You have Bombito you're trying to put in there. Frazier you're trying to play. You have all these players trying to fit that role. When I think we have one that could do that role. I don't know if you feel the same. Yeah, yeah I like Schwinner. I, 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 I feel like it's, it's a, he should be in this team. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. I think Schwinner could, could play a role on this side. I like the way he plays. I like how how aggressive he is when he gets on the ball, wants to get forward. But look, at the end of the day, we're, we're not picking the team, but our opinions, both of them are, we would have liked to see them playing tonight. But let's not get it, take anything away from it. It was a difficult match for the Canadian team today, you know, considering the, the weather, the, the, the environment, the, the Guatemalan fans were, were spectacular tonight, and they pushed that Guatemalan team on. And they made it difficult for the, for the Canadians, but obviously we're, we'll be disappointed. We didn't get three points. We got two, so we're still mm -hmm. in it. But, you know, it's not in our hands right now. If Guatemala ends up beating Guadalupe, we're in trouble. You've got to beat Guadal uh, Cuba by five. Mm -hmm. And if Guadalupe wins or we end up losing, you know, it's, gonna be, it's a tough task right now, and it's, uh, it's an unfortunate situation, but they're still in the game. I like to keep it simple. Canada... I mean, you just win and score as many goals as you possibly can. But to your point, why do they have to be in that position to begin with? Let's hear what John Herdman has to say. Thank you, coach. First of all, what do you think about the environment for your players? A lot of adversity, the weather conditions, and all, all the fans, or the majority of fans, were from Guatemala. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. This is Conga Cuff. You're in Houston, and it feels like you're in the centre of Guatemala. We knew it was going to be a hell of a battle tonight. We knew there'd be some adversity, but, you know, the boys stuck to the task. The one thing we couldn't do was lose tonight. And we give it everything to try and win. I think the moments were there to win the match for both teams. I think you have to take your hat off to Guatemala. I thought they were brilliant tonight. Boyed on by this fan base. But I thought Canada put a shift in. I thought we were tight, we were energetic, and we had some good moments to, to get the three points. So, on to the next match, it's all to play for. What do you assess from these first two draws from your team? Just quality. We're, we're missing that quality at the moment in those flank areas. Too many times, too many times we've got into that area and just not being able to deliver that type of quality we used to. So we'll get back to work on that. We've got Cuba up next. Big opportunity for us. Three points. It's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, big opportunity. Three points, goal difference. If we get our goal difference right, we get a chance to go through. This group's all to play for. Our lads will be ready enough for it. It's uh, necessary the victory for uh, with Cuba. It's necessary the victory against Cuba. Yeah, three points. That's it. It's very clear we've got to win that third game. Five points, good goal difference. Should put us through. Thank you, coach. Thank you. I was just waiting for John to go viral. I was just waiting for the one, two, and that was it. And then that goes viral. Then we find out that it was a kid, and then it's absolutely devastating, and that... John, you did the right thing. That was a true pro right there. He gets the win on that, but obviously he wanted the win on this night. I did want to ask you as well about near the end when he was making those changes, Richie Larea going back there, pushing for a goal. I know what he said there, the goal was also not to, to lose, right? Because once you lose, you've really put yourself in the hole. Uh, but when you're also pushing for a goal, were you surprised to see Richie go to the back three? Very surprised because he's that, he was the only player on the pitch at the time for Canada that is exceptional going forward 1v1. Yeah, Schaffelberg is good vertical, but at that point, Ali Amin was off, Junior Hoylet was off, Richie Larea is the guy, you see it for TFC week in and week out, to take on players, get a ball in the box, and you just need that one play to go up and win 1-0, and then you could breathe a bit. So I was very per perplexed while he was playing three in the back. I don't want to just keep getting at John and, and the decision, but these small little decisions, they make games. And I feel like maybe having Richie there in an offensive position towards the end of the match could have helped Canada yeah, today. Look, you're not getting at John. It's just your opinion and what you see in a match. That's all that is. You know, for me, I thought they could have maybe went with a back four and pushed the Y guys up a, a little bit higher because I felt, felt towards the end of the match, uh, Schaffelberg and, and even Larea when he was playing out, out wide, they were getting pinned back. 
And for them to go forward now, you're making 50, 60 yard runs to join the attack. And rather than their starting positions being a little bit higher up the pitch, where that would have been the outlet. When we do win it, can we get the ball out wide quick and then go attack? Well, Guatemala's opened up a little bit. Um, but they kept, kept that shape with the back three and... Um, you know, that was a decision that they made, but I thought they could have changed it a little bit towards the end there and just pushed our wide guys a little bit f further up to give them a little bit more joy going forward. Do you give, uh, do you give the Canadians a bit of a pass? Because Herdman obviously talked about Latin. They're missing the quality, right? Yeah. We know that the big guys are not here. Is that, I always like to talk about in the world of sports, there are reasons and then there are excuses. But do you put that as a reason why perhaps maybe they're struggling offensively? Well, it's the creativity in the final third, right? The movement, the delivery into the box. Here, this was this was one of the better balls that went into the box. Miller does well. You know, Cavallini's just got to cushion that header there. Instead, he punches it down, which takes a big bobble, and Hoyle can't get his hips wrapped around it. But the other times that they did get into the box, just their, the delivery wasn't good enough. Thank you. Looking at that play there, Bambito, and he gets it out of the arm and puts it on his left foot as well. These are moments, yes, that, oh, you could say are unlucky, but there are also moments when you're looking at Guatemala as well that they had them also. So I think here, this is probably the biggest chance in that touch by Schaffenberg. You just wish it was a bit tighter to his body and, and he could get it. But Canada were chomping at the bit, chomping at the bit, but the quality was lacking today, in my opinion. No, it was. 100% it was. It's not that we didn't get in good areas, which we did, but it was just that, that final ball, that final pass, that cross, where we just overhit things, we rushed things. We just didn't look comfortable in, in those areas. And I felt at times too, and I said it even when we were talking to, you know, during the game, that it was a bit, bit static at times. And even those unselfish runs, Jordan, where you've got to pull a defender out of position, that third man run trying to get in behind with that little link up play, I just felt it wasn't there today. And it was a little bit too easy for the Guatemalan defenders at times because everything was kind of in front. Yeah, I'd agree with you. And, and look, you need those players, whether it be Cavallini or Brim, whoever's playing nine. Sometimes it's often the wingers, right? Just a decoy run. Just a run just to be vertical and air things out. You might not get the ball, but I felt far too many times tonight the Guatemalan defenders were okay with having the game in front of them. There were no players that really stretched them vertical. Yes, Canada got the ball wide, but there was still just a cross to four or five guys in the box ready to deal with it. But I think in a game like that, you have to stretch the opposition so there's room to play. I have a simple question, but I feel like the answer is not so simple. What's happened? I, I felt like during World Cup qualifying, it was never in doubt that Canada was going to score and score multiple times. And then I just feel like you look at Nations League semifinal, okay, fine, David and Davies, they show up and they score the two goals. But it was, the, you know, David, Davies, um, Laren, I feel like, you know, they disappeared against the Americans. You see this game here. I don't know. I just, I feel like the offense is not as trustworthy as it once was. What happened? That's a good question, Andy. That's why I said it's a simple question, <laughs> a but very, probably a difficult it's a, answer. It's a I, very and I, good question. I don't know what it is. I honestly don't know what it is because these guys are able to score with their club teams and then they come and then it just seems like it's not there for Canada the way it used to be. I'm not saying it's completely disappeared, but it was just without a doubt I would sit right here and I would get ready for a World Cup qualifying game and I just knew Canada was going to win. Yeah. Well, the, th the other thing is too, you know, when with this Canadian team, you know, People are, people are doing their homework now. They're really analyzing the, the team. They're, they're looking at their movements, the patterns of play, and they're trying to figure everything out. That, that's, that's just football. It, it happens. And sometimes when, the, when other teams and opposition start to figure out the way that you're playing, then you as a coach, you've got to change again. And you've got to adapt and adjust to the players that you have and try to figure something new out. Because if you keep doing the same thing over and over and over, you become predictable and you're easy to play against. And, and it's make it, you make it, the opposition makes it difficult for you to, to follow through with those patterns and, and those movements that you used to have that worked for you in qualifying. So yeah. you, maybe you do, you gotta adjust and you gotta figure out what your next move is now tactically. The other teams, they have video sessions too? Of course they do. They are studying the Canadians and, that, and that's exactly it, right? Once the other teams figure you out, how do you move around that? And I feel like that's where the Canadians are at the moment because other teams most definitely know that Canada 
is a threat. So you know they're going to work that much harder in studying this team and making sure they can jump out on top and do what Guatemala did here tonight, stifle the offense. So Guatemala pretty pleased with the draw. The Canadians know that puts them in a really tough situation in their final group stage game against Cuba. It looks like we're headed towards And many people's dreams of owning a home. What's keeping you up at night? I'm kind of stressed about uh, my money situation. Oh, it's stressful to talk about. Oscar, come here. Here's your financial stress companion. She definitely helps. It's never too late to start. Good portfolio. I quit saving for my first down payment. To play, it's something that's in us from the very beginning, and something we take with us on every step of the journey. When we have no words, it gives us a way to speak. When we are still finding our way in the world, it gives us somewhere to belong. And no matter who we are or where we come from, it gives us the right to dream. It's time to celebrate the game we love. It's time to play. Degree 72 hour nonstop protection. Antiperspirant with motion sense. Test it to the limit. Degree keeps working when others stop. Join us now on America's birthday, today being Canada's birthday. On July 4th, the Canadians will play in their final group stage game. This is now a must win. And depending on the result between Guatemala and Guadeloupe, it's a must win by a lot of goals. Kickoff, 6.30 p.m. Eastern time. We'll get you started right here on One Soccer. Annie Petrillo, Jimmy Brennan, Jordan Wilson with you now. What is it that you want to see, Jordan, in that game against Cuba, other than the obvious, which is win and get goals? How do you feel they can do that? Good question. I think... Well, one is being vertical in terms of if it's Cavallini, if it's Brim, whoever's playing up top, is they need to start stretching opposition. And I think also, too, getting numbers in and around the box. Too many times tonight I saw wide players crossing the ball in, and decent balls, or maybe it went far, but there's one ca Canadian player with four Guatemalan players. I think when you're playing Cuba and it's a must-win game, flood the box, get guys two, three, four, five, in and around it, that's where you can have success. Those are two things I'm looking for when I'm watching this game on, on yeah, America's I, Day. I, I, I agree with you. <laughs> I think in the, in the final third, the tempo's got to be lifted. The quality's got to be there because it, it wasn't there at times. They've got to be clinical. And you, you do, you've got to overload it. Now you're going to be playing against Cuba. You have to score goals. Mm -hmm. There's nothing... There's, Nothing else. You need goals, and they've got to win by a large margin, depending on the results uh, that could happen. Do you see then Herdman maybe taking more risks than maybe he usually would just because he knows that he, he has, has to score to. those goals? He's got to take risks this match. You have to win. It's nothing yeah. else. You're not going to play for a draw. I also think the game plan, you played similar lineups twice. You have to throw an ace card down now. I think he's forced to. That ace card might be two or three players, an attacking player, someone different. Look, I'm not saying that... Uh, the lineup that he had didn't work. I'm saying that people are looking at this team and they've figured out whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So you have to throw something different as a manager. We'll see. We'll see how things go on Tuesday. Canada taking on Cuba right here. Must win in order to move out of the group stage. That's it for us here tonight. Happy birthday, Canada. We'll see you next time.